Today I'm talking to Jeremy Crawford about the inclusion of two new playable races in this month's Unearthed Arcana. You have a new Unearthed Arcana with a few new playable races. What are those and why? So this month in Unearthed Arcana, uh, the theme, and it just sort of emerged naturally as we were tinkering around with some things, was Greek mythology and specifically uh, two species from Greek myth, centaurs and minotaurs. Now we had toyed around with minotaurs before in Unearthed Arcana, specifically exploring the minotaurs of Krim. And we got feedback from that, and I believe that was back in 2015, so it's been a few years. And we were looking at that feedback, and then we for a while had been wanting to uh, play around with a playable version of the centaur. And we thought, well, since we're doing one, why not then tinker with the other? And so this month's Arcana, Unearthed Arcana was born. One of the things that we went back and forth on, especially regarding the centaur, was its size. And it's funny, we, our department for over a decade now has at various times talked about toying with uh, centaurs as a playable race. But the wall we always slam into is them being large. And I say that's a wall because as soon as a player character is large all the time, this introduces a number of issues for the system. Not unsolvable, uh, but some real issues. For instance, there are a number of paladin abilities and spells that radiate out from somebody. As soon as you are larger, larger, your, the effective scope of those abilities just got bigger. Uh, you're able to block wide corridors on your own, and so on and so forth. So there are a number of consequences uh, of making somebody large all the time. We are fine with making you large part of the time. It's like we have spells, uh, like enlarge, that you know for a little bit of time you get to be bigger and enjoy the benefits and sometimes the downsides of being larger than smaller medium. But we're like, uh, we've always been hesitant to have a, a species that is that big 100% of the time. We realized working on the centaur that in many ways this is a false problem because, and this, this is how nerdy we are, we were studying some images that we've done in the past of centaurs. Uh, we, we looked at descriptions of horses, but then also considered what would the back portion of a horse be like in proportion to a humanoid-like upper body. And we realized it's not uh, crazy to conceive of centaurs who would actually fit within a five-foot square. And so we said, we'll make them medium. Uh, because even though our monster centaurs in the monster manual are large, whenever we make the playable version of something, we're always making the version that is archetypal for a player character. We're not saying every member of this species is exactly like this. So really all we're saying in this, in this Unearthed Arcana is even though, there, yes, there are centaurs who are large, if you're playing one, you're playing one who's medium. So you're a little smaller for a centaur, uh, but you get to gallop around with a speed of 40 feet. Uh, that is also related to an interesting problem that we pondered when coming up with the centaur, and that is how the heck does a centaur climb a ladder? And we went through various versions of rules for a person with that anatomy trying to make their way up and down something like a ladder. We settled on a pretty simple rule, uh, expanding upon how climbing already works in the game, where for any character, climbing costs you one extra foot of movement for each foot you climb. Well, for the four-horsed centaur, each foot you climb costs you uh, four extra feet of movement. Um, and so we just assume you will somehow make it work. The DMs, of course, might decide there are certain climbs that are just uh, impossible for a centaur. Uh, centaurs also have sort of a charge ability. Uh, they have a natural uh, knack for survival, so they have proficiency in the survival skill. 
Uh, and that's there partly because their story is that they have a strong connection with nature. And that's something we also talk about them uh, in the Monster Manual. Now the Minotaur, uh, that's in many ways kind of the bonus bit, revision of what we did before. Uh, they're similar to the Centaur and not only being from Greek myth, but uh, also their Monster Manual cousins are large, whereas the playable versions are medium. Now we also had done that originally because that was appropriate for Kryn Minotaurs. This time the Minotaurs we're presenting are not specifically tied to Kryn, although they certainly work for Kryn Minotaurs. We decided we wanted to broaden it a little bit so it would work uh, really for any world where you want to play a Minotaur who has not been warped by the demonic influence of the demon lord Baphomet. Because the story for monstrous Minotaurs is they are really the product of the demon lord Baphomet and they have an, a, a savagery because of that demonic connection. The Minotaurs that we're presenting here are a people like any other who they can make their own moral decisions and whatnot, they are not in the shadow of Baphomet. Uh, people will see we've tweaked some things uh, in the Minotaur since the last time. Most of it really uh, various refinements. One thing that readers, readers will notice is that in both the Minotaur and in the Centaur, we're experimenting with a new racial trait called uh, hybrid nature. And for the first time ever, we are uh, introducing uh, these people who have two creature types. Up till now, uh, all of the peoples whom you can play in the game are of one creature type. And we decided, well, we could start experimenting with uh, peoples who have more than one. And so in these cases, uh, the centaur and the minotaur, they are both monstrosities and humanoids. And then the rule associated with that is if an effect in the game can affect either of your creature types, then it can affect you. So what that means is if someone casts Charm Person on a centaur, a playable centaur, it can work because the centaur is part humanoid. Uh, this was, because we went back and forth because in the monster manual, centaurs are monstrosities, they're not humanoids, although of course they actually have a humanoid uh, upper body. And so we not only wanted to solve this from a storytelling perspective, but also from a game mechanics perspective. Because there is this hidden thing where if we made a playable option, not non-humanoid, you would actually under the surface be getting all sorts of immunities to various things uh, because there are a lot of spells and other effects in the game that only work on humanoids or only work on humanoids and beasts. So if a person wandered in and said, like, hey, I'm a monstrosity, then you essentially then bam, you're immune to all sorts of things. So we also needed to solve that uh, because that could end up being uh, a disruptive bit of power for a player character. Thank you, Jeremy Crawford, for being on the show. You can play test both the Centaur and the Minotaur on dndbeyond.com. I'm Todd Kenrick. Thank you for watching.